Hello, Driving Intelligence community. Well, I've got a dash light on my 2006 CTSV, which indicates that my entire airbag system, the supplemental restraint system, has been defeated. Ran the diagnostics with my blue driver, which is something I've recommended for a long time, but that doesn't give me the actual codes. It just says that there's a problem. Well, I've got a new device I'm going to introduce in this video. It's a Mucar V06. I'll do a further evaluation of it later on, but I'll show you what I found out with the new device that has a little bit more extensive diagnostic capability. Stay tuned. This video is a lot longer than normal because I wanted to explain how I developed my plan of attack given I've never worked on a supplemental restraint system before. I had to drive my own intelligence. This listing of timestamps here will show you how to get to certain elements in the video more quickly if that's what you want to do, or you can just watch the whole video, which is something that I hope you do. This failure was a bear to figure out for a couple reasons. Number one, I didn't have the diagnostic tool I needed to do the supplemental restraint system testing and diagnosis. And second, I've never worked on supplemental restraint systems before. I've pulled airbags, which is a whole different category, but to actually do an analysis of what the problem is and Put together a, uh, a corrective action plan I didn't have that skill I had to go out there and get that skill so it scared me and it should scare you to work on an airbag system without the proper tools and knowledge I've been using the blue driver OBD dongle for quite a few years now and it's a fantastic tool that I've used to resolve a lot of issues but it does have its limitations when I connected it to my Cadillac to determine what this airbag light was for it would not give me any diagnostic trouble codes now connected to the fact that I had the battery after several months doing some other work I put the battery in, the airbag light came on, and the dr blue driver told me that I probably had an issue that would resolve itself after so many key clicks. Well, I kind of took that as the gospel and started driving the vehicle. Problem is, when you have an airbag system issue like this, as I understand it, it completely defeats all of your airbag systems. So none of the airbags would have deployed had I gotten into an accident. Given what the blue driver testing device told me, I continued to drive this car quite a bit until I hooked up my new Mucar V06 bi-directional testing unit. Now what you see going on here is the first test that I performed on this car to find out what the actual airbag system issue was. When I got through this entire, entire system check, it gave me B0065 and B0066. Now my, uh, my blue driver would not give me those diagnostic trouble codes as I had indicated earlier. I had to drive my own intelligence because I really didn't understand what that meant to me. But through my, my own investigation, I found out that those had to do with the pretensioner in the driver's side seat. So with the diagnostic trouble codes in hand and knowing that the failure had something to do with this bell pretensioner, I put together a plan of attack. Just because I had a bell pretensioner code doesn't mean it was the bell pretensioner. In my case, I've already told you that that was the issue. But it could have been wiring, it could have been the SRS module, could have been several other things. In this case, my plan of attack went through all the, uh, the potential scenarios as I knocked each issue down to determine where the problem is. I spent a lot of hours on this. Uh, I could have saved myself a lot of time, but spent a lot of money getting Cadillac to fix it. So I guess the point I want to make to you here is that if you don't feel like you have the, uh, the technical knowledge to do this, don't do this project. Because these airbags, they can all deploy at the same time. Uh, you can cause some kind of failure. It's highly expensive. It's highly dangerous. These little explosives are throughout the vehicle. This isn't going to hurt you if it goes off. But uh, the airbag going off, the airbag in the seat going off, those things could cause injury if you don't know what you're doing. So make sure you have the tools in your head as well as in hand before you start this project. So what is a pretensioner? Well, this device has an explosive charge, as I've already mentioned, in this tube. And when you get into an accident, probably a front-end collision, what your SRS module is going to do is send a signal to this port here that this explosive charge should fire, and it's going to push a piston in here forward. Now, on the back of this, you can see there's a cable. This cable actually retracts the buckle and tightens the belt up, so it pulls you against the seat pulls you away from the airbag, away from the steering wheel. Now I'll take you through the diagnostic steps I used to help me isolate the problem. The first thing I needed to get my hands on was a wiring diagram. This helped me understand system design, component location, and the location of the wiring connectors. Now with this particular vehicle, the seat belts are fully integrated into the seat. That's a little different from some other vehicles where the seat belts integrate into the B pillar, the floor pan, or even into the door. 
With a better understanding of the supplemental restraint system design and having the diagnostic trouble codes that came out of the MUCAR V06, I was ready to get started, but I still needed one tool that was a diagnostic tool. Now in this video, I'll show you how to build your own. I'll link all the parts below. They're sourced on Amazon. And if you buy from Amazon, I get a very small cut without costing you any more. But once I finished completing the diagnostic tool, I was ready to get started after I disconnected the battery for 30 minutes. So the rest of this video is going to show you how to get this work done. Now just as a reminder, please like, please comment. It causes YouTube to push my information, my videos out to others on YouTube, really helping out my channel. Now let's get started. Interestingly enough, the seats on my Cadillac and other GMs I've worked on, there's only two bolts on the back and then there is a clip or a slot in the front of the seat. You have to lift the seat up, pull it back after you take these two bolts out. As I mentioned, there's a couple clips here that reach underneath these openings in the floor. So once you get those bolts out of the back, you gotta lift the back of the seat up enough so that you can pull this at an angle out of these slots and that's giving me access underneath the seat. Now, the yellow connector indicates that this is part of the supplemental restraint system. I need to disconnect this connector so that I can pull the seat out. I wanna check all the wiring under the seat. This yellow connector indicates the SRS restraint system and there are four pins in this. The two on this side go to the seatbelt retractor, and the other side is for the airbag that's integrated into the seat. Now I'm going to test these four pins using a 2.8 ohm system. I'm going to jumper each side of this with 2.8 ohms to see if I can turn off the airbag light. I'll link at the bottom in the description section where I got these, but these are 2.8 ohm devices that are used to, uh, to jumper or emulate that the airbag system is completely intact. These won't fit easily, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld a couple leads on here. But uh, I'll use this and those two jumper locations I just showed you to emulate the airbag that's in the seat and the retractable seat belt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of these clips on each one of these testers with a little bit of wire. I've got some old speaker wire here that's going to make it perfect for the connection. And I can push this down onto the pins that are in the connector that I'm testing. But I'm going to solder all this together to make a nice test lead and I'll show you how that looks when it's done. Second jumper is complete. Incidentally, these I bought are, uh, are designed to be plugged into the wiring harness. Unfortunately, this wouldn't work for mine, especially since the end I'm testing is male, similar to the, uh, the testing device or this, this little uh, jumper. So I put some uh, female ends on this from this kit. Uh, again, I'll link this below. They're 2.8 millimeter spade connectors. You can see them there, I've soldered them on. I've used the shrink wrap. I'll also link this below. And now I can test the uh, SRS system from the wiring harness to the, uh, the SRS module. So I've got one jumper already installed, but what I wanna do first is show you what the key on looks like. With the key on, you can see the airbag light is still on and I'm getting some indication on the dash that I've got an airbag issue, service airbag. I've got both jumpers installed now and you can see that the airbag light has turned off. I don't have any indication on my information center. So I know that the wiring going from here to the SRS module is not a problem. It's got to be in my seat. I'm checking all the connections also to make sure there's no corrosion. I've disconnected this, uh, this connector to the explosive device in the seatbelt by lifting this, carefully lifting this black clip up and then it pulled straight out. I'm going to put some dielectric grease in here just to make sure that, uh, that there's no, uh, no problems with corrosion in the future. Okay, so I'm driving my own intelligence here by doing a lot of research since I've not uh, messed with this before and I want to make sure I'm doing this properly. So obviously the yellow connector once again indicates that this is a supplemental restraint system. When you disconnect it, you can see this little spring clip here. And what it does when you disconnect it is shorts out the leads going to the, uh, the airbag element. Now this is the airbag for the side of the seat. What I need to do is remove that clip, that spring clip, and it's pretty easy to do. Just remember how it goes back in and I'm gonna check the resistance off these two connection points. Okay, the spring clip's removed, and now I'll check the resistance. All right, I've got my ohmmeter set to resistance, and you can see that I'm sitting exactly at 2.7 ohms, 2.6, which is a good thing. That means that the airbag on the side of the seat is good. It's 
So I don't have a problem with the side airbag. What I have a problem with is the tensioner because it's not giving me a proper resistance. All right, so I got my ohmmeter connected to the pre-tensioner and you can see that I'm sitting at 1,700,000 ohms, which is obviously too much. So this is an indication that my pre-tensioner is bad. It's a good thing I pulled a seat. I'm gonna have to find a pre-tensioner. I might go to the boneyard and find one, but I'm not putting my beautiful CTSV back together until I get this resolved. But at least now I know what my problem is. So I found myself a Rex CTS. The airbag's not blown, so I'm hoping that the buckle is okay. I'm gonna pull the seat and test it with my meter. So talk about luck of the first draw. I disconnected the connectors, hooked up my ohm meter, and you can see it's exactly 2.6 ohms, which means that that buckle is still good. So all I gotta do is get the seat out of the way and, uh, and pull that buckle out. So now that I've found a good seatbelt buckle and the pretension is still good, I've cleaned up everything. I put some new electrical tape on there to, to uh, protect the contacts. And I'm putting the nut back on with just a little bit of Loctite to make sure that it stays secured. And I should be back in business once I get this all together. Now just to point out a few precautions, I made sure that I carefully routed all the wires back the way they were underneath. You've got all this, uh, this mechanism moving back and forth, which can clip the wires. Also, here you can see that uh, I've made sure to put the shorting clip back in there. You can see that little clip, there's both of them there, as well as adding the, the two black retainers. Those need to be put back in. I want to make sure that I don't have any concerns about this uh, SRS system coming apart while I'm driving the vehicle. All right, I've got all the electrical installed. I've got the battery cable reattached. I just haven't bolted down a seat yet because I want to make sure that everything is working. I've already checked the, the motion of the seat and that works fine. So now we're all gonna watch together whether or not I actually fix this. And voila, that airbag light went out. If I can get you focused in there, outstanding. With repairs completed and the seat bolted down, I ran diagnostics with my Mucar V06 scanner once again to confirm correction of all diagnostic trouble codes. I ran diagnostics before clearing trouble codes to make sure I didn't mask any remaining issues by clearing the car's memory. Here notice that certain elements of this Cadillac need to be reset since the battery was disconnected, like the express window function. Resetting the express window is easy in this car by holding the power window control in the up position for a few seconds after the window has closed completely. After reinitializing the express windows and clearing all diagnostic trouble codes, I ran diagnostics again and this 2006 Cadillac CTSV has a clean bill of health. If you made it this far in my video, I sincerely thank you and don't leave before leaving a comment and hitting that like button. I'll see you next time on Driving Intelligence.